It's called counterfeit or counterpart. How to continuously discern the will of God in every area of your life. A lot of these points that I'm discussing today come from this book, and this book is very impactful because it's going to help you test the spirits in front of you. Uh, there's actual activities, actual uh, systems and processes that you can put every person through to test them. So if you feel led, get this book because I think it'd be a benefit to you. Let's keep going back to our points. But you got to make sure that you think three moves ahead. What are the potential consequences if I ignore these red flags? Let's continue. So I have more points. Now, now, what causes us to ignore red flags? Here are five things. I think that's five. Five things that causes us to ignore red flags. Number one, F, false hopes. False hopes is what causes us to ignore red flags. They're obvious. They're seen. We see them, but we ignore them. False hopes. False hope is anything that I put my hope in, hopefully uh, uh, believing that this thing will ultimately help me, right? Uh, but we have to understand our hope must be in God. Our hope, like I said in the previous video, our hope, and I, I don't know if it's for the students or for y'all, but, but our hope has to be in the one who has the greater scope. If not, our hope will fall down slopes, right? So our hope has to be in the one who has the ultimate scope. God has an eternal scope. I can't trust nobody's scope in this realm. I can't trust nobody's scope. Not mine's, not anybody else's. Uh, my ultimate trust. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people who have seen things that I can trust, but I can't put my ultimate trust in people who have limited scope. I have to put my ultimate trust in the one who has the ultimate scope. I got to put my hope in his scope because he sees my past, he sees my present, and he sees my, my predestined life all in one glance. So I have to put my hope in him so that my hope don't slow, nor do I get caught up in dope, right? But we got to make sure that we don't develop false hopes. But a lot of people got false hopes and it, they ignore. My hope is that this person will save me. A lot of people got this idea that, that, that once I get in a relationship, then I will be better. We're pursuing happiness versus being placed in joy. Being placed in joy and being placed in contentment is the safest place. But when you get your hope so caught up in, in, in uh, uh, all these different things, you forget the word that says hope deferred makes the heart sick. The reason why we are diseased as a people, the reason why we are mentally ill for a lot of people, the reason why we are ill in other places of our lives is because we have allowed our hope to be deferred. When you put your hope in something that's false and you believe it is true, and when it proves not to be true, then you threw and all of a sudden now you, you're, you're, you're suffocating in, in, in your own uh, uh, de de depression because you got caught up in these false impressions. That's why your hope has to be in God where nothing, you're not moved. My ultimate hope can't be in my wife. My hope can't be in my money. My hope can't be in, in anything, even though they may be true and have been sent by God. I still can't put my hope in that because pe anything in this earth realm can move by any kind of wind. You may not be able to bend, but there's a wind that will make you bend. You see what I'm saying? So I can't put my trust in anything because all it takes is a strong enough storm with a strong enough wind to make that thing bend. And now I'm in between confused. But if I'm rooted in God and he's my hope, then I could trust his scope. False hopes. Believing that this thing will save me. Believing this thing will bless me. Believing this thing will, will, will solve all of my issues and solve all of my troubles and solve everything in my life. That's a false hope. What causes us to ignore uh, red flags? L, low self-esteem and a lack of contentment. Well, at least someone's showing me attention. At least someone's giving me. That's why the enemy, they, they prey on people who are insecure. Because they know if you got low self-esteem, all I got to do is come down to your level and go up a couple of yards. <laughs> come down to the table, go up a couple of yards. And since you've never been told I love you, and since you've never been told that you're amazing, and since you've never been told that you was cute, and since you've never been told that you was handsome, and because you've never been told that you was worth anything, all they got to do is spit a couple of words at you, and now you immersed in what you've heard, and then you lose on yourself. We got to get to a place that we be loved. So that we can rise above some people. The reason why they ignore red flags because of low self-esteem and a lack of contentment. They don't have no contentment. They're not content. They, they haven't pitched their tent in God and trust. That's why my tent is in God, because wherever he moves. I, ooh, that's powerful. See, I don't build houses where I should pitch a tent. 
That's why I don't get so caught up in houses down here. I don't get so caught up in stuff because I'm a pilgrim passing through. So all I got to do is construct tents in God's presence, right? Because if God moves, I can pick up my tent and move with him. That's contentment. That I've constructed a tent in God's presence. And wherever he moves, I can pitch up my tent and move. But if you get a house in a temporary place, hear me metaphorically, nothing wrong with having a house here, a nice house. Don't matter, nothing wrong with that. But make sure that that don't become your anchor, all right? But the reason why we're supposed to pitch tent in God's presence so that if God says move, we can move. And when God wants to wrap you up, there ain't nothing getting you stuck here. I told my students last night, I said, if Jesus comes back tonight, Will you be glad or would you be sad? That's a question you got to answer too. If Jesus comes back tonight, in the next two hours, would you be glad at his appearance or sad at his appearance? Now, you're going to try to go with him because you, either way, you're going to be like, I don't want to be stuck here. But would your heart be troubled? Would you be like Lot and have to be dragged out of Sodom and Gomorrah? Or do you want to go with him? There's, I told, I told my students, I said, listen, if God comes back tonight and I never become a dad, I'm okay with that. If God comes back tonight and I never touch a million dollars, I'm glad. I'm all right. Because my my there's nothing in me through the help of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to let the Holy Spirit keep my heart from being anchored. There is nothing here that's going to make me want to not disappear when it's time to disappear. <laughs> so the question is, if Jesus comes back today, would you be glad or would you be sad? That's a real question. If you're not, if you're going to be sad, that means you, there's, you built a house in a temporary place. Eight, they accelerating to match what others, to match other people's accomplishments. What causes people to ignore red flags, especially in relationships? I don't care. I got a man. Now I'm going to put it on the gram so that everybody can see. So my ex can see I done moved on. And now you got this person in your life with all these red flags just to, to, just to prove that you improved. See, you don't got to prove that you improve. Your improvement proves, right? And when we understand that, then we don't got to add different things into our lives to try to prove to people that we improve. Work on yourself and you naturally improve. But so many people are accelerating to match. Well, they getting married by next year. I'm going to try to get married by next year. I'm going to try to accelerate my life to match other people's accomplishments. That's accelerating in business. That's accelerating in ministry. That's accelerating in entrepreneurship. That's accelerating in areas. And you're ignoring the red flags. You ignore it. We, we ignore them because we want to match other people's accomplishments. So we ignore the red flags in this young man. We ignore the red flags in this young woman because we want to please the gram. The issue in life is the thing in life is we're supposed to be doing things for God, not for the gram. Let's keep going. Gee, God is taking too long. What causes us to ignore the red flags is God is taking too long. Let me tell you something about God. <clears throat> Your tears can't make them move faster. Your pouting is not going to bring the outings. <laughs> it's not going to bring anything out of him. I'm telling you, God is not moved by that stuff. God is moved by improvement. God is moved by maturity. God is moved by contentment. God is moved by those things. And what I want to say about that is, is that God is taking too long because he wants to make you long. God takes a while so that you can grow up, so that we can grow up. And so the reason why many people ignore the red flags and other people, right, is that God is taking too long. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me a boo. I'm going to get me a man. I'm going to do what I can because, God, you're taking too long. And then when you what you realize is that God's timing is so perfect to the point to where not only will you be whole, then the one you want will be whole. And let me tell you something about wholeness. Wholeness doesn't mean perfection. Wholeness means preparedness. Wholeness doesn't mean perfection. Wholeness just means that person's mature. Wholeness doesn't mean that person's perfect. Wholeness means that per person is healthy enough for a marriage relationship. I'm not perfect in my marriage, but I'm healthy for it. <laughs> I'm mature enough for it because of the Holy Spirit and my reliance on him. So I don't want people to think that oh, whole means I got to be perfect. The Bible says, um, man, what's the scripture? Come on, give it to me, Holy Spirit. Um, uh, count it all joy when you go through various trials. Let's break that down. Count it all joy when you meet. So a, why, a smart person, a seasoned person knows that when a trial comes, whether of any various kinds, they meet it with joy. 
because they know that this trial is going to make them uh, 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 last a while. It's going to make them grow and develop. So when they meet the trial of various kinds, whether it's a, a trial at the job, a trial over here, a testing, a trial period is a period of testing, a period of proving, a period of grooming, a period of positioning. So it's a period of time where you're being tested so that you can be elevated. That's why a faith that is not tested is a faith that can't be trusted. So I count it all joy when a trial comes in my life because I know that the testing of my faith produces what? Patience. Everyone knows that the greatest things occur when you're the most patient. Patience comes from perspective. So I count all joy when I meet various trials. Oh, it's a trial period coming again. That means God is prepared. Trials should, you should rejoice when trials come because if God sent the trial, that means what's, what's coming after the trial is worth the while. That means what you've been praying for is on its way, but you have to be tested to make sure that you're prepared. So I count all joy when I meet various trials. Know that the testing of my faith. Faith is a muscle. I have to build my faith. My faith has to be developed. Because if you can't, if you don't have the faith to hold this level, how are you going to have the faith to weather the storms on the next level? If you're easily moved, if we're easily budged, if we're easily honked and tossed between two opinions, then how will we have faith against that? I got to have faith that no matter what happens in my marriage, I can still lead and I can still be led. I got to build my faith every day. I can't, nobody can uh, 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 practice for the state championship the day before and they never played before. Those people who are in the postseason in the NBA, in the NBA Western Conference, East Crown Finals are typically either the healthiest or the most, the best coach or the most talented or the most prepared, right? So we got to make sure that we allow these trials, even in your singleness, the trials in these other areas of your life, prepare you to build the faith to not waver from God, even if money comes. You got to have faith for treasure, not just from uh, uh, testing and trials, because the reason why God has put a cap on a cap on us, the reason why Christianity is more like the NFL than it is the MLB. The MLB got a loose cap. Their cap is whatever. Because God knows if you go beyond a certain place, you're going to leave me. I love the verse that says, don't make me poor, God, to a point to where I steal, nor make me too rich that I leave you. There's a certain place that God foresees and knows that person can't, can't handle a million dollars. That person can't handle a wife right now. That person can't handle a husband right now. That person can't handle um, being known and recognized. They're not disciplined enough. They're not submitted enough. They're not focused enough. So God is taking too long. Uh, ask what causes us to ignore red flags. We have a savior's complex. We ignore red flags and people because we have a savior's complex. Oh, I can save him. What, what the uh, psalmist J. Cole said, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save him. They don't want to be saved. Only Jesus can save, fam. We don't have the energy. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the strength to be Jesus. So we ignore his red flag because we believe that we can save him. And ladies, hear me clearly. You can't save a man because if you try to save a man, you will have a boy for the rest of your life. Because what happens is when a woman has a savior's complex, then she start nurturing a man. Men don't want nurturing. Men don't need nurturing. Men need support. Boys, sons need nurturing. Men don't need nurturing. And so we have a savior's complex. You have a misunderstanding of your gifting of nurturing. And now you start nurturing this man as if he's your husband. And now he's content with the benefits and has no desire to meet your requirements because he's getting all of your breasts and all the milk that comes from it. He's being breastfed. A man of God wants to be supported, motivated, <clears throat> encouraged, not nurtured. And when you have a savings complex, don't allow your 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 sight of the goodness in them make you ignore their red flags. I post this on Instagram that you just because you see good in them doesn't mean you ignore their red flags. And so many people are ignoring the the red flags in a woman. They're ignoring the red flags in a man because of the good they see in them. But only the goodness of God draws a man to repentance. Your goodness can't make a man repent. Your goodness can't make a woman repent. Only God's goodness, mercy, and grace can pop someone open and say, hey, I am a sinner. I need a savior. I need to be sanctified and molded so I can develop the skills where my, my discernment has been trained 
where I'm able to distinguish between what's good and evil. Ladies, you want a man that's able to distinguish between what's good and evil. If you don't got a man that ain't able to, they're more, more focused on being distinguished versus being able to distinguish, then you're going to find yourself in ditches. So don't have a savior's complex thinking that you can save this man. Only Jesus can save. And you don't want a man um, uh, who's still a boy, right? And you nurturing them. And then, then, then you like, okay, well, I'm going to build him up. And how many women have built the boo, built the man? They don't build the man. The man done left after they done built. And he don't build the man. He done kicked you out of the house that you built. He done kicked you out of the life of his that you helped him build. So that's why you got to be built and he has to be built so that y'all can build an empire together. And a lot of guys have a savior's complex too. They want to save her and, and, and mold her dreams. And you're over there and all she wants to do is be on Instagram. All she wants to do is uh, get followers and likes and she don't even know how to do anything. And all of a sudden, but I see good in her. I can see it in you and you invested in businesses and she don't got no business acumen. And you trying to support her and try to send her off to college. You don't want to go. And you supporting this dead weight. That's why we can't be unequally yoked. Because we unequally yoked. The, the premise of that, that point is, is that the stronger calf is the one that dies. That's why they always say the weaker one in the relationship controls the relationship. The, the one that's least in love, less in love, the one that's the weakest in relationship controls the relationship. Because you know why? Because all they got to do is be carried. And as you're pulling your weight, you're pulling their weight and the carriage and the marriage. So you pulling you, you pulling her, you pulling him and the marriage and the carriage and the kids. And it snaps your neck in the process and you suffocate while they're living because they're leeches. That's why we can't get so caught up on or saving people. Let Jesus save. Let him save. And he, if they, if, and no, don't even just let Jesus save. See how far they're deep in the sanctification process. People, a, a man can be saved. A woman can be saved, but don't know how to behave. <laughs> they're righteous. The imputed rights of Jesus has been placed on them. They're in right standing with God, but they're not mature. They're still on milk. So they don't know how to behave as a husband yet. They just got saved. They don't know how to behave as a wife. They just got saved. They don't know how to behave in these different areas. They just got saved. So you just can't be like, well, they know the Lord or, or have they allowed the Lord to shepherd them and develop them to maturehood until where they're able. So the reason why we ignore red flags is because F, false hopes, L, low self-esteem or lack of contentment. A, accelerating to match other people's accomplishments. G, God is taking too long or because we have a savior's complex. Let's go to the next slide. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to engage more content, make sure you check out the videos over here. If you want to learn more about the books that I've written or the cards that I've created or ways that you can support and engage with what I do online, make sure you check out the links in the description box below. And if you've been watching this far, you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell, and make sure you leave a comment. I would love to read it and would love to engage and be your coach online. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.